I'm talking with Ellen Graves, who's the CEO of Do Not Age. Ellen, it is really good to see you again. To see you too, Nils. Thank you for having me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm going to start here by going down a list of questions that came in in the Facebook group. This will be somewhat random going in different directions. The first one is Do Not Age is best known for selling supplements. You also, as I understand it, are engaged in research projects. And I was wondering if you could tell me more about your research. For example, what kinds of products you are looking at are the studies being done on animals or humans? Are there plans to submit the results for publication and anything else that you'd like to focus on there? Sure thing. So yeah, we are a health research organization, uh, which essentially means that we use the revenues that we produce to put back into research, be that through our own research or supporting other people's research, sometimes with ingredients, sometimes with money, sometimes with both. And we do both human and animal studies. Uh, human trials obviously take a lot longer, so we, we can't expect fast results. But the CERT-6 mouse trial publication uh, was supposed to happen at the end of last year, and it has been delayed. So it's now going to be published in uh, the journal in 2024. However, the results are already in, and we've emailed those out to our members. Mm. Uh, everything that we're allowed to discuss and we're allowed to talk about is written about in our emails. So if people make sure they're reading the emails. That's the, the best and the fastest way to find mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. well, can you tell us which journal you expect that to be published in? I can't because it's not confirmed yet. So I don't want to okay. build any hopes up. <laughs> Got it. Good enough. Does Do Not Age have any new supplements on the horizon? Yes, we do. I mean... Again, because we're always doing research, there's always something new that we're looking at. And it's not just new ingredients as well. It's improving on current ones. So there's always everything's always in a constant uh, state of flux because we believe that we can improve everything. But in more direct answer to the question is we are launching a brand new supplement in March of 2024. So next month, I can't tell you what it is yet, but I will give you a hint. And the hint is that it's healthy for your heart. Could you tell us about your pet product? Sure. So essentially, Pure Pet is, it contains all the favorite ingredients for people for longevity in a pet tree. So people are giving them to their dogs, to their cats. Uh, obviously, it depends on the size of the animal, how many you give them. Uh, the good news is that there's no danger of placebo effect with the animals. So when you see these benefits and they fit, you can see that those animals are feeling the benefits. We know that it's legitimate uh, because they don't understand what they're taking. Um, and so, yeah, we've had a ton of success stories about it. And I think part of the amazing thing about Pure Pet is it came from our members because they, it was one of the most common questions we'd get. Uh, I'm going to give this NMN or this Cert6 activator to my poodle you know how much should i give and we would have to say look you know we're making these things for humans this is not we don't want to give a recommendation and then eventually this became overwhelming and so we said okay well let's let's create something that is uh, specifically for pets for people who are giving those to their pets what recommendations would you have in terms of what you're just talking about like the the size of the animal it, the number of treats that they're given yeah that's right so the animals are we basically group them into four different sizings. So we've got small, medium, large, and extra large. Uh, and, uh, you know, if we're talking about dogs, for example, you're looking at a chihuahua would be a small dog uh, and then a medium-sized, I'm not very good with dog breeds, uh, a medium-sized dog would probably be double the size of that. Uh, and then, you know, a large dog might be a mastiff or something along those lines. And then if you have a a great Dane that could be an XL. Um, on the side of the packaging, it's actually split out by kilograms as well, just to make it a little bit easier for people. Mm -hmm. So the weight of your pet. Mm -hmm. So do all cats kind of fit in the same category, all adult cats? I mean, all... most house cats would do. Most house cats would do, yeah. Can you talk at all the, about... about what you have heard from people giving their pets those products, like what effects people have been seeing? I think the mood of the animal, people tend to know the, the mood their animal is in. Um, and, and, you know, especially once they get to a certain age, that mood tends to dip. 
and some of the mood improves. Uh, and then a lot of the other bits are very similar to what we see in humans. More energy, better sleep, mm -hmm. um, healthier gut, you know, uh, digestion is the polite way to say it. Do you have any recommendations for people who travel and want to take the supplements with them? Is there, for example, a way that you handle that? I know that you do a lot of traveling in your own work. Yes. Yeah, I usually do a lot of traveling, but um, it depends how long you're traveling for. So if I'm traveling for a few days, I can use a pill organizer. But if it's a two-week vacation or if I'm going for a long business trip, then I just take them all with me because, you know, all those spaces at a premium, it's all about priorities. Three people in the group had asked for more information about SIRT6 activator. So what might be the possible benefits of activating the SIRT2 and 6 gene? Okay, so I'll, I'll start talking about the trial, the mouse trial that's already concluded. As I said, it has been emailed out, but Professor Gorbanova and her team basically concluded that SIRT6 activated does reverse aging. So obviously it's quite an important trial. Um, the mice taking SIRT6 activator were far healthier in all metrics and they lived, health, uh, they lived a healthier, longer life and using inflammatory markers, we saw the SIRT6 activated group had significantly lower inflammation than the control group. So what other benefits does the SIRT6 gene have? I mean, it promotes DNA repair, it protects the telomeres. I'm sure all of the people in your in Facebook group are fully aware of, of telomeres and their role. It supports genomic stability and, of course, reduces inflammation, that we now know. So uh, for, for those that don't know, humans have a step seven to two ends, and of those, uh, CERT6 is the one that's most important for a long life. And the studies have shown that CERT6, having a sort of stronger expression of CERT2 and 6, correlates with a longer and healthier life. Any species that are long-lived tend to have a much stronger CERT2 and 6 as well. So when you look at bowhead whales as a good example, 200-odd-year uh lifespan and um, uh, that Professor Corbin ever talks about a lot in, in some of her work that can be found on YouTube if people want to dive in further. Um, there are studies as well that show adding extra copies of CERT6 in mice extends their lifespan. It can help to avoid mutations in your cells, uh, helps to maintain chromatin organization and basically that just means that the correct genes are expressed and turned on and off and then the correct ones are also silenced. Uh, again, reduces inflammation, uh, people report getting sick less. They're feeling uh, they, they can recover faster from exercise. They feel stronger. They have obviously a reduced biological age. It tends to be the, uh, the, th the theme as well. Removal of joint pain, um, more energy. They feel better about their appearance. That their, their appearance is improved. Uh, so yeah, I mean, CERT6 activator for me is definitely the most important ingredient in my uh, supplement stack. Interesting. But when you were saying that Dr. Gorbanova saw some lifespan extension in the animal studies, do you know how much of an extension? Uh, it depends on the animal. So it was all, it's all different depending on the animal. And of course, then depending on the gender as well, there's some slight differences between male and female. Um, but I think the, the overriding important thing to remember is that animals with similar uh, organisms to us uh, that rely on CERT6, if you increase or activate their CERT2 and 6, they do live longer and healthier. And it's already proven in humans as well, right? Because of the studies in centenarians. If you look at healthy people that are over the age of 100 years old, they have one thing in common, which is a high level of CERT6 activity. Interesting. Is there any possibility of do not age selling urolithin A again? You're in it today. Um, okay, so maybe a little bit of backstory for those that don't know. We produced the urolithin A product and ingredient. It was proved to be very successful within a few days of us um, putting it out to people at a very reasonable cost. We were served with like a cease and desist essentially from Nestle, uh, which is the world's largest food and drink company worth some $330 billion dollars. They are unfortunately a hell of a lot bigger than we are. So um, it was either submit to them or they would just sue us into oblivion and then we wouldn't exist anymore. And so that's why people can't get urolithin A right now. However, not one to lie down. We are working on something right now 
there is going to be a way there are patents that we can purchase not from nestle different patents that will give us access to something that is even more beneficial than just direct urolipin a of course research is not fast and you know search we can only go as fast as our r d so once we get these ingredients we then have to take them through testing so it's not going to be uh, anything soon but uh, the question was is there any chance of sort of getting your in a again basically yes but not yet for those taking glycine and NAC, which do not age puts together in one supplement we had some questions about the dose and timing for example one person right. asked is it better to take glycine and neck at night or in the morning are there any concerns about it disrupting sleep or does the glycine in it help with sleep i mean people are welcome to take things whenever they want but most people do take it during the day i think as with most supplements taking it every day is going to be more important than precisely what time you take it at but yes glycine does have benefits for sleep any thoughts on an optimal dose of glycine and NAC? Well, I can tell you what I do. I take two of our capsules every day. Uh, I know that a lot of people take four. And I don't know if that's a mixture of because they want a higher dose or because it's one of the lower priced, you know, it's the lower cost ingredient. Um, and so a lot of people sort of double up on those lower cost ingredients. Um, but for me personally, I take two every day. Some people take a product called NACET, in acetyl cysteine ethyl ester, which is a variation on NAC. Would Do Not Age consider selling an NACET supplement in the future? Well, that's quite remarkable, actually, because it's something that we are currently testing. So we don't normally speak about the things that we're testing because we do so many and obviously most of them fail. Um, but yeah, that is something that's in testing at the moment to see if we can improve that product. So uh, if it proves to be as good as we think, then we may well uh, see it being used within you know six months or so. Interesting. That almost sounds like a rigged question, though. <laughs> the way I asked. It. Oh, is there any possibility? Yeah, well, if, any, if anybody <laughs> wants to check, I'm sure you. I'm assuming you posted this in the group, the Facebook group itself, right? Uh, yeah. 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 yeah so if anybody wants to check, they can go and have a look at the post and see all the all the responses. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. The question about NACET, there was someone who had been mentioning in the group actually for over a year, I think, that they were taking it. They had taken the NACET rather than the NAC and were hoping that you guys might do something with that. So it's very interesting synchronicity. Yeah. Okay, so um, should do not age supplements be taken along with food or just with water in your estimation? Yeah, I guess each one is different, but there are instructions on the bottle as well as instructions that can come with the order. Um, I think the best thing to say is probably if anybody has any specific questions, because not everybody takes the same uh, different ingredients. I think anybody with any specific questions can just email hello at do not age dog. Just write down for everything you're taking. And then one of the team there can will respond with the best practices as to how and when to take things. Do you have any recommendations in terms of the supplements sold by Do Not Age in regard to per body weight dosing? In other words, should a person who weighs 110 or 120 take the same dose of donated supplements as someone who weighs 180 or 185 thereabouts? I mean, that depends on the ingredient because there's a lot of different variables for each person, right? Um, not everybody's got absorbs the same amount of ingredients. Uh, there's a lot of different variables that we just cannot possibly account for. Um, so we have to go for the the best dosage is really the best guest dosage. Uh, and as such, that's why we encourage people to do personalized testing and uh, see for themselves what they're comfortable with. You know, a lot of people, when they first start on NMN, they only start on 500 milligrams. And of course, then they increase from there. Um, so I think there are some ingredients where it's more important. So cert so 6 activator, for example, is one. Uh, it's on the website there, how much you should be taking depending on your weight. But really, um, 
it's the I would say it's the consumer's responsibility to try and see um, how much they are comfortable with taking. Are there any concerns that you're aware of about taking different supplements together? Yeah, I mean, there's there's always potential um, negatives, and that's why you know there are, many, there are many things that should not be taken at the same time as each other. So that's why we're careful about what we launch, and everything is tested together because we know that obviously most of our members are using pretty much all of our ingredients, right? And so when we do our testing, it's not just this is an individual product and give it to 50 people and see how it goes. This is giving it to people that are taking everything else as well. So we're, we, we make sure it's tested to, to ensure there's no contraindications. Um, one of the questions we get a lot is about sort of what about this particular medication? Somebody's on a particular medication. We can't give specific medical advice. So the best thing to do there is, is speak to your doctor. Most of the time it's fine, but it's always worth checking. Can you talk any more about those tests, like how those are set up and who would be participating in them and any more information? Yeah, that's right. So, well, they're chosen randomly. I mean, a lot of people started out either as uh, Do Not Age members or they are they started out as just health enthusiasts and are now Do Not Age members. Um, and it all depends. It all depends on the ingredient. It depends on the amount of people we're using. Um, and so usually we'll just have sort of uh, we'll goes from anything from self-reported right the way up to coming in and you know being in care for a few weeks. So one of the easy examples would be NMN, for example. We would give 50 people NMN that we know are already taking the resveratrol, the TNG, the Cert6, etc. And we would then test their NAD levels beforehand, test their NAD levels at the end, and then also um, do blood tests and ask them as well. Ask them for feedback about any side effect. Did you feel nauseous? Did you have a headache? Did you struggle to sleep? All those kind of things as well. Um, so that's what I mean when I talk about testing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got it. Thank you. Moving on to completely unrelated questions. This is a <laughs> person in the group speaking. I sometimes get acid reflux after taking supplements. Do you have any advice for avoiding that problem? Um, I mean, the uh, standard response would be antacids, wouldn't it? But I'm not a big fan of antacids myself. I think there's a lot of different variables as to why acid reflux would be happening. So again, I think the advice here would be to email hello at the do not age org. Be very specific about what you're eating, what your routine is, what supplements you're taking, what you believe the cause might be. Um, and then one of the team will be able to respond and help that person individually. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. And then I'd probably throw in there that the acid reflux may just be something incidental. It might be a medical issue. And then obviously if it's a medical issue, that'd be one to um, possibly take up with a, a doctor. So, um, yeah. okay. So moving on here. Oh, are do not ages facilities and products GMP compliant? Yes, of course. That's the that's the very bare minimum that people should expect. <laughs> Have Do Not Ages products been tested for lead or mercury levels? If so, can you publish the certificates of analysis on the website? I saw one for NMN, but not for the other products. Yeah, so I mean, everything's tested at multiple times throughout the production process. And of course, once completed, but a lot of it is done first party. So it's done in-house. Um, but we do also have third party tests for everything as well. So uh, they're not all posted online because there's a lot of ingredients like berberine is one example. You know, it's it's already such a low cost to produce it that it's very rarely uh, faked or people rarely cook corners with the actual ingredient. Um, the reason it's done on NMN and displayed on NMN is because it's very commonly faked by people. There's a lot of NMN online, NMN online um, that's not real. And so that's why those are more prominent. Would you consider offering a complete kit for longevity, which contains the ingredients in all of your supplements in one container, maybe in a little baggie? So people could just pop open the container, take out that baggie and take all of them at once. I like the idea. 
Uh, I think the I think the container would probably be too large, but um, I mean we're we're actually working on something to, for towards the end of 2024 that will make things a little bit easier. Uh, so again, I guess the advice there is keep your eye on your emails. Um, but I think in in its current form, if if you think about you know the, the average do not age member with 12 to 13 containers already putting all that into one container is going to be a pretty big container. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we're, we're, we're having, we're trying to find ways of consolidating that without compromising on the ultimately the beneficial effects on people's health. Are there new over the counter analogs of NMN that, which would presumably be other ways of boosting NAD that do not age is working on supplying for the future. Yes, we like to, and we are exploring other NAD boosters, but right now the best two are NR and NMN. Does do not age have any plans to sell rapamycin in the future? No, rapamycin is a drug. So we, you know, we've supported research and funded some research into looking whether as to whether rapamycin is all it's cracked up to be um, but it's not something we'll we plan on providing because it like i say it's a drug um do you take your own supplements and apart from that what else do you personally do for anti-aging yeah of course um i mean i i take them all so <laughs> My biomarker, my biomarkers right now are going to be extremely sort of skewed as to what they normally would be, um, because I'm used to traveling a lot and I haven't traveled in the last two months or so. Um, I've been sleeping really well, um, rig rigorously exercising. I don't know if you know Nils, but I'm training for my first professional boxing match. Excellent. So my body fat is at its lowest percentage it's probably ever been. Um, uh, so at the moment things are a little bit different I'm still taking the supplements obviously some of them are even a little bit more uh, the collagen the creatine and the NMN I've increased as well um, but at the same time this sport has been very hard on my body as well because you know as you can imagine professional boxing is not easy um, so yeah I think if I gave all the information of what I'm doing right now then it would probably be a little bit skewed because of the time of life i'm at um but i believe after the boxing if i don't continue to pursue professional boxing after my first fight um, then i would go back to how i was doing things before uh, which is probably being a little bit too stressed working a little bit too much um, but then trying to do everything else right so hmm. intermittent fasting is something that i'm big into um, going to the gym to do resistance exercise is something that i'm big into as well and i think is very very important for people as they age um, i also think sleep is extremely important not something i'm typically great at but very very important so um that's probably the best answer i can give but yeah i mean i, I take all of the supplements that we provide i mm -hmm. think it would be wrong if i didn't what was it that pulled you into boxing i i've always loved boxing always 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 loved boxing um it's been a sport that i've followed and watched my entire life um and then i realized circa six months ago that i always kind of thought in the back of my mind i'm good enough to do it professionally and then six months ago i realized if i'm going to do it then now is probably the time so uh yeah i take myself to the middle east um i live with my boxing training team um and yeah we've we've been working very hard night and day Interesting. I had no idea. Some people in our community get their blood tested regularly. Are there blood tests that you would recommend people take to verify the effects on their biomarkers of taking supplements? Yeah, I mean, testing is always it was always a good thing. It's more information, more data points is always going to be a good thing for your own health. Um, I said. You know, my motto from 2023, from last year, was that everybody should become the CEO of their own health. Um, and I think testing is a really important way to do that. Um, I think those that do want to get a sort of really specific handle on their measurements, 
Um, they're the ones that tend to do the testing. But I must say that most people, you know, most of our members still don't do regular testing, at least. Um, we have a new, I don't know if we've spoken about this before, Nils, when did we last speak, maybe six months ago? Uh, we have a new omega-3 vitamin D test kit that shows those markers. So very, very important markers, and they're very commonly low in the modern world as well. So if people can grab that, I think it's $99 or something along those lines. Mm. Do you get your own blood tested? I'm assuming you do from what you just said. And what changes have you noticed? Um, well, these days, things are a bit more stable. So like my NAD level stays healthy. But of course, when I first did it, it wasn't healthy. Um, and the same thing can be said for omega-3 and vitamin D as well. Um, biological age is a little bit different because there's lots of things that go into it. And... Uh, I think it, it's better for me personally to use the NAD test and the omega-3 and vitamin D test because those markers are things that you can directly control um, and you know that it's you know 100% accurate. Whereas a biological age test is a sort of generalized direction and can be sort of six months either way out of whack, if that makes sense. Are you currently taking rapamycin yourself and do you have any plans to do so in the future? No, um, I, I mean, it's far too dangerous for me <laughs> right now. I think the potential downsides of messing with your immune system are huge. Um, but as I said earlier, we, we're, we're financially supporting more studies into rapamycin to see if it can be safely administered. And if it can be, then that's a great thing. But it's it's far too far too risky for me right now. I remember you saying, I think at the end of our last interview, that you had once had stem cell therapy and i was wondering if you could give us an update on that did you notice any changes as a result any plans to do it again or do it repeatedly i don't feel like i need it at the moment but i did do stem cell therapy on my shoulders and my shoulders have i would say drastically improved you know they're still not perfect but again because of the mistakes i made as a younger man i I have to deal with these shoulders now and when i had the mris done previously they were they were really bad and they basically said the left one is essentially dislocated constantly and the right one's hanging on by a thread um, and now they feel a lot better and obviously i'm doing the boxing so you know if, if the shoulders weren't working i wouldn't be able to throw punches so mm. uh, i do believe the stem cells did help and you know i wouldn't be averse to having more stem cell therapy it's just i was you know, I was curious about it and I had a specific reason for wanting to do it. So uh, I, I don't have any plans to do it in the immediate future, but no doubt I probably will uh, within a few years. I know that you've changed, you've made changes to the containers at various times over the years. Um, for example, the size changed and then have a kind of a screw on lid, used to be kind of a snap on lid. Um, what do you consider it changing from? <clears throat> Pardon me. Would you consider changing from plastic to glass containers at some point in the future? Probably not, because I would have to see a very good case for it. I think that from what we've seen, plastic bottles are actually better for the environment. I think it was Alice Brock, PhD, did a, a study that found you know plastic bottles are. Um, sort of more environmentally, uh, sorry, plastic. the plastic bottles were less environmentally damaging than the glass bottles. Um, and, and I understand, you know, plastic can't be endlessly recycled, but the manufacturing process is a lot less energy intensive um, because there's a lot of melting point for plastics compared with glass. Ellen, is there anything else that you would like to um, cover that, any other news that you'd like to share with people or hint at? Or... No, I, I'd say I think most of the important stuff comes out via email. Um, uh, I know that everybody's getting on really well with their health points. The health points are like the loyalty points that you build up in your Do Not Age account. Um, we give away millions of dollars in free products every year through health points. Um, so, yeah, keep, keep earning those. If anyone's got any questions about them, they can email in. I think that's everything. We've discussed Pure Pet. That's the sort of really uh, 
popular topic at the moment. Everybody's happy with how their pets are responding to Pure Pet, which is great. I'm really, really pleased to see that. Uh, and I guess all that's left is to say thank you. You know, we couldn't do this research um, without any of our members. And a lot of our members wouldn't know about us without Nils. So thank you, Nils. Um, yeah, thank you, everybody. And anybody needs anything, just uh, drop us an email. Thank you very much for taking the time to do the interview. It's really good to see you again. I want to hear about the details of your boxing match when that happens. <laughs> so, sure, will do. Thanks, Nils. All right, take care. This video is sponsored by Do Not Age for a 10% discount on all of the products and services on their website. Use the discount code PATHWAYS, being sure to type it in all caps. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.